Welcome to SelfDiscoveryWisdom.com, formerly known as Self Discovery Media. On these podcasts, you're going to hear people who speak from the heart. They've taken the journey in life. Many things have happened to them, but they've changed it to happening for them. And in their strength, their courage, they've discovered their abilities and their wisdom, and they are now sharing it here with you. Do enjoy each show. We bring it to you with love and knowing that it's going to help you on your journey of life. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of Choose Positive Living right here on selfdiscoverywisdom.com. I'm your host, Sarah Troy, and my guest today is David Week. And what are we talking about? We're talking about peace. Peace. Join the peace wave and make some waves. Well, we are actually recording this on election day. My show is always recorded before, come out a week later. And it's very apropos that we uh, talk about peace and send out peace to the world at the present moment, especially to North America, because there's a lot of transitioning happening. We're hoping, and we're in blue, that it's going to go to that. But we know that there will be some angst and some anger and probably some violence if it doesn't go that way. And that is a choice. Life is a choice. And if we do not step into peace and become the peace that we seek, we will forever be in turmoil. So David founded Youth Services in Santa Cruz and what's in California in 1974 with a staff of eight, an eager group of volunteers and a budget of only 17,000. This current multi-million dollar center is going strong today. Based on the dynamic early years of youth services, he's authored a chapter in the recently published book, The Origins of Neurolinguistic Programming. In 1983, David helped launch the United Nations NGO Pathways to Peace, PTP, which has assisted the resolution passage of the UN's International Day of Peace in 1981. David has been a leader in organization and celebration of the International Day of Peace since 1984, and he currently serves as a PTP director. While working at Stanford University in, in 1985, he founded the 10-year-long PTP Peace Within Organization program, and in 1995, co-founded the visionary project Peace Building Through Business, which led to being a leader, um, leading member of five-year international think tank on the future role of business in the 25th century. David is currently the team leader of the Global Culture of Peace Initiative, a new and designated peace messenger initiative of which Pathways to Peace services as a secretariat. In significance to both individual and collective peace building lies in fostering culture of peace that resonates across communities and nations. Strategies for cultivating this peace, including daily practices like riding the peace wave, a simple but powerful ritual observed at 12 noon in every time zone since 1983. People worldwide have paused at noon to honor a minute of silence, a moment of peace, collectively creating continuous wave of peaceful energy that encircles the planet. By participating in the peace waves, individuals nurture their inner peace while contributing to the global field of peace, generating a practicing peace across all areas of human endeavor and strengthens these efforts, showcasing peace as a powerful and actionable and universal accessible force. Amen to that, it does. <clears throat> I don't actually understand when we are looking at choice, why people would choose anger and hate over the sublime sense of peace and equilibrium. Because peace brings you that equilibrium. But we have to understand if we're living in turmoil times, it's very easy to get angry, isn't it? Welcome to the show, David. Thank you very much. I'm delighted to be here with you. And, and I certainly appreciate the your, your uh, positioning of the art of a positive living. Yeah, so, that, I mean, that essentially creating the, the positive living is essentially peace building. Yes. That There you go. Yeah. Uh, but it is up to us. I mean, you, you decided that you wanted to give peace a chance. <laughs> right? And by having people do a practice, and we talk a great deal about meditation and centering yourself and breathing. Well, when you are in that meditative breathing center state, you are in a state of peace. That's the aura that comes from you 
from that state of peace, right? If everybody did that every day, a few times a day, imagine the ripple effect. Well, yeah, you're absolutely correct. And, and fundamentally, that's where peace begins. Mm. Peace begins with us, each person individually, and the choices that we make. We get up in the morning and the choices we make and how we interact with our, our family, you know, with our coworkers, with going to school, with, you know, those around us and how we interact. It also has to do with how we, our own thoughts, mm. our own, what we think, what, how we feel about ourselves. Um, and I think this goes back to um, as you think, so you become. Yes. This is ancient, ancient knowledge but it is how we think we move into the, that we're attracted to that we create that in our lives particularly over time and that's a major part of, of peace building <clears throat> all the way beginning with the united nations beginning mm -hmm. with with uh you know peace building ultimately you can have war you can have conflict you have, what does it ultimately come to is sitting down to talk. Yeah. Open-mindedly. Yeah. And you, you talk about negotiations, you mm. figure out how to proceed, how, you know, you figure it out. You're like, good Lord, skip the, the violence, skip the bombing, just get to talking because yes. that's where you wind up anyhow. You know, and uh, it's, it's, I wonder, I want to hit on that point for a moment before you go further, because um, this last week I had a colonel on. Um, and he was talking about, you know, the Middle East war and he served for a long time. And now even in his retirement, they're, they're serving in a different way. And he was talking about that. And I said to him, can peace stand a chance there? And he said, no. And he said, you, you know, when he was um, in Iraq, <clears throat> he would go into a school and there, you know, on the board was this indoctrination that unless you were this, everybody else was an enemy. And so it's taught from infancy yeah. up now you know love and hate is something that is taught through the parents and society's actions and if society is indoctrinating in our children that everyone else is the enemy mm -hmm. then that child will grow up to hating without even understanding what they are hating so sure. it is hard to sit down and talk when somebody it's become a part of their dna no, no question about that, for sure. And and that's that's where the big choices come in, is are we creating a culture of war mm. or the culture of peace? Yeah. And it's the culture is what we live in. And, and I'd like to share that in a moment. But just going back to the beginning of the United Nations, which was founded in San Francisco in you know, 1945, 46, um, and part of that is a UNESCO, which is the uh, UN Ed, um, Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization. And the preamble of uh, begins with, since wars begin in the minds of men and women, it is in the minds of men that the defenses of peace must be constructed. So, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. in the you know, here we have, you know, the, the United Nations is based on it in our minds yes. and heart. Mm -hmm. and, and that's where it all, all begins. But it is, again, the choices. But you get, you know, the, the confounding evolution, as you're saying, with the teaching of kids. You know, you, this is the enemy and you hate and so on. That is, that's what's so tough about unraveling that yeah. and, you know, going back to um, ultimately how do you get back to you know compassion uh, you know being more open to others and that's a big part of our lives <clears throat> excuse me because we, in our and this goes to the bigger picture of of um, what you're talking about spiritually and you know we're we're in the 3d world yeah. We're in the world. It's a hard knocks. Yeah. This is a place of hard knocks. But in my experience and, and, and understanding and belief, is this is our schoolhouse. This uh -huh. is where we learn and continue to learn 
And, and um, one of the things that uh, was an inspiration to me, and I had some uh, steps along my life where I really had some deep, you know, learn, you know, experiences about, you know, what's going on here. But I think it all comes to what uh, Pierre um, Teilhard de Chardin had said, you are not a human being in search of a spiritual experience. Mm -hmm. You are a spiritual being immersed in the human experience. I'm talking my language now completely. Yeah. This is this is entirely well, my well, my platform yeah. and my teachings. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And, and and so here we are in this schoolhouse mm -hmm. learning about choices, learning to, you know all the lessons that we're learning and ultimately learning who we are. Learning that yeah. we are Incredible beings, we are spirit, we are unified, we are, you know, we are all from the same place. I mean, it, like whatever you want to call it, right? God, yeah. universe, source, spirit, energy, it doesn't really matter. It is that it's coming from a more powerful source. I call it wisdom. This is why this network is called self discovery wisdom. You know, we're on our discovery of what our wisdom is, and that wisdom is obtainable at any time to download. And when that wisdom comes through to us, it's like a compass that guides us and resonates with the heart and truth. It's given to our action, our spirit in, to be actionable. And it goes to our mind for our mind to know what it needs to know when it needs to know it in clarity. And I think we've, we've been taught to think from the database and there's so much information going on there. How do you know what's relevant in the moment or not? If we don't include the soul, the heart and the spirit's intellect, how do we know what's relevant in this moment? What's important in this moment? And I think this that's the spiritual approach to life. And it's also so much easier because now we have a better understanding of what we're here to do, why we're here to do it, how we're meant to elevate our spirit, our consciousness into a higher plane of love. And then we actually kind of understand what our role is, what our role is. We're all here to contribute. We're all here to right. be of service to one another. And for me to inflict harm on another is to inflict harm upon myself. So, you know, it's the rising up to that love vibration, which is a higher hertz, a higher energy. And in well, that really. higher consciousness, you see things differently and you don't want the angst or the anger. You don't want that because it, it's a shattering energy rather than a peaceful flowing energy, that of choosing the peaceful side of the equation. That's right. Yeah, I absolutely agree with you. And <laughs> I think in the you know, larger picture, the spiritual picture, that we come in as spirit, as soul. They're born into this physical entity. A vessel. We're coming, <laughs> we're, we're coming, what's that? A vessel. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. And we're coming into this, you know, the physical world from where we have been. Um, and my, my, again, my understanding is, you know, we all don't come in at the same level. Mm -hmm. You know, it is, you know, so some people more or souls come in more at the, you know, third grade level or the, you know, the, the, or maybe we all do, but it's part of our learning and evolution. And that's why basically, again, my understanding and belief is that, you know, this where we just can't do it in one lifetime. No, no, so definitely not. In. So, mm -hmm. I mean, so it's like it makes absolutely no sense for a kid to die. I actually had a daughter who died. Early. Sorry to hear that. Yeah, and and but it's like she didn't have the chance to learn and grow all that she you know. Well, but she's a great spirit. But anyhow, it takes you know learning who we are in our spiritual sense takes time. <laughs> and mm -hmm. well, well, it, uh, it's hard to say because you know there's also splash of inspiration or a great awakening that happens too but basically yeah. um, we're in the world and then we're making choices and there's the choices that um well as you say <clears throat> you you can make choices to have a uh, life that is much more peaceful and much more um embracing or not compassionate yes Right. I mean, that, that's really kind of a core thing, isn't it? Where is your compassion? 
Right. And if you want to ignite the heart, that compassion needs to be there, that empathy of understanding or caring. Sometimes you don't understand, but just simply caring. You know, why is a child taken so early? And very often that was their contract to come here, to shine bright for a period of time, to leave their mark. But mm -hmm. now they were on to the next and it, and it mm -hmm. leaves the pain behind. But w w through that pain, you see the gift of what they are. And I, I'm sure, like so many parents I've interviewed uh, who have lost a child, you know, in that child's memory or name or energy, divine energy, you find a path forward uh, mm -hmm. that they have actually shed light on. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's no question about that. I mean, it, <laughs> you have own experience, you know, for sure. Yeah, definitely. And I think that in the larger picture, you know, big picture, you know, that you, as humanity, we are in evolution of consciousness. Yes. And, it's, and it, I mean, this is, you know, years and years or eons, but it is an evolution. And um, I'll talk with more about Pathways to Peace in a moment, but um, one of our colleagues, um, his name is Willis Harmon, and he was the president of the Institute of Noetic Sciences, a great visionary, uh, futurist, and and he said, perhaps the only limits to the human mind are those we believe in. Mm -hmm. it's, mm -hmm. Again, it's like our perception, yes. and what do we, where do we stay or what are we stuck on, or how do we open it? And then, I think you're absolutely right, what you mentioned earlier on, is what, you can't just will it. No. Can't just will it. So you could, you know, tell us all better than than I in terms of what's the role of meditation? What's the mm -hmm. role of because it is stilling this and being open. It's being open yeah. to the wisdom that is, the knowledge that is, the which, which is us. Or yes. being open to who you know, my greater wiser self. And and so in the discovery of our own wisdom, which is always accessible. And <clears throat> you talked, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, earlier about kind of the 3D. I have a diff have an approach to it this way. 3D um, are more the neophondical type of thinking where they're still very much in hate, vengeance, revenge, uh, greed, opulence, mm -hmm. um, power. And, you know, they're, they're lacking. They're very, very lacking, and they don't know their way forth to peace because they're, they're so entrenched in which element of where they've chosen of that. Those that have chosen to walk onto the 4D bridge, so to speak, I cannot live like this anymore. I'm making a choice to move forward to a more peaceful life. And then it's up to those five dimensioners that are at a certain level uh, of energetic um, energy to help them find and navigate their way forward or go wherever else they're meant to go. But you have to have the free will. Can't help anybody in that 3D. Um, in however much you talk to them, uh, you you can't you can plant seeds, you can plant thoughts. They will push back. They will call you a liar. They will deny it. Everything they possibly can, until it's reached a saturation point for them, where mm. it's a turning point. Where like, I cannot be here anymore, and I'm willing to walk away from it. And all we can be. <clears throat> is the hand ready to help them across but peace is a choice mm -hmm. right <clears throat> inner peace does take some work mm -hmm. right they're, they're finding an equilibrium in ourselves a place where we can feel at home within ourselves it's not at home exterior it's interior it does take some work you have to look yeah. at your traumas you have to look at things you've been holding on to how do i let go how do i move forward how do I look to the future and not drag the past? And all of that does take work. And for so many people, they rather stay in that hate, in that finger pointing. And as I say, as you're pointing a finger at everybody, there's three pointing back at you, mm -hmm. right? Um, but they rather stay there because they think it takes less energy to stay there than it does to move forward, which, no, it burns them up quicker. Well, it is also, uh, as you know, and that's part of the you know therapy and, and so on, is it's comfortable to stay in the known. 
mm-hmm. even when it's negative, because yeah. it's, because it's known. The devil, you know, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Which the yeah. saying, I don't know if you were brought up with that, is, you know, stay with the devil you know, at least you know him. And again, well, I don't want to stay with the devil. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the, you also mentioned about the um, the energetics, the mm-hmm. uh, vibration, the mm-hmm. frequency yes. um, that we are all connected. I mean, you don't know this, and, you know, through, certainly through the spiritual and but it's also known and shown now through physics. Yes. So, through physics. So you may have heard Dr. Jude Caravan, C U R R I V A N. She's a cosmologist, she's a physicist, um uh, Harvard trained, she, and she and others have you know the proof of physics that we are all aligned, we are all connected. There we are. There's a unified field. Yep. We are all that, and what we do influences that. Mm-hmm. So you may also have heard of heart math. Heart math is, is in, in you know, California, um, and there's a whole great scientific study around the relationship between the mind and the heart. The heart is there's great wisdom. Mm-hmm. The heart is real. You know knowledge in the heart and also finding the coherence between mind and heart is a very big deal but then there's also the energetic of who we are and what we you know um you know radiate out is the energy and finding that there's a the coherence globally in humanity and they have have uh, ways of measuring yes the coherence in the world and that and even with um i have a colleague who is a professor at the maharishi university i believe it's in iowa where they have you know they get thousands of people they've done st- studies you get thousands of people together who are meditating and have influenced the community the yes influence. the ripple effect mm-hmm. yeah the, the ripple effect the, exactly so you know again we're all uh, connected so around peace and peace building, um, we we what we choose does make a difference. Yes, because that's and we're we, choosing the energy, right? Right. We're, we're choosing what energy we come from and what energy we want to project out. I have another show genre called quantum spirituality, and it yeah. speaks to that because uh, the beautiful thing that's happening now amongst scientists. They're looking at people that live on a higher spiritual plane and realizing they're just living on a higher hertz, a higher frequency, a higher vibration, <clears throat> which they can measure. Yeah. But they also look at the the pulsation of that energy that goes out there uh, and how healing it is for the people within that parameter. And there are some people that can reach further, um, some people that it's in their proximity. But when you do get collective souls together that come from the heart, and send out goodwill, you know, love and, and healing to the world. Now look at that pulsation like, like a speaker that's just working overtime, that's reaching out there. So, But we have to be part of that equation. We have to be part of that frequency. Have you ever seen the Judy Dench documentary on trees? Uh, I, <laughs> I think it's a part of it with the mycelium and the, yep. how they talk. Yes. And, and, and it, you know, the forest doesn't say to you, you're a willow, get out of here. You know, it yeah. doesn't care what you what you are. Um, and even when you when you die, new growth comes from you. But they, you know, they did this wonderful camera thing where they looked at, you know, the mycelium, I call it the fiber optics, because if we look underneath our tissue, you know, we have these fiber optics that go through us that make everything work. Well, the connection between all the trees and all things that are living, they're constantly communicating. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. awesome. That's and it's like, but we are too. It's just that we're not acknowledging that communication. Right. And, and, and we need to be discerning of what we're putting out there. If you are angry, spend your anger. Don't spend it on other people. Do something to release it so that you're not imposing it on other people. Right. Well, and, and also ourselves. I mean, mm. internalize the anger of the, and what happens. So then you have health issues. 
because yes. it impacts our, our bodies more than we know. So, I mean, the stress is one of the greatest, you know, uh, medical uh, difficulties or, or even killer um, yeah. in stress. And, well, they've actually um, have said that um, stress is the number one killer for the diseases that it brings on. When we're at right. dis-ease, that's when disease comes in. And it will hit you at whatever your weakest gene in, whether it's heart, cancer, whatever it is. That's when the system starts breaking down. Why is it breaking down? Because the flow of your energy is not being able to recycle through your body and you get blockages. And so then where the energy can't go, the flow is not going, it starts to break down. So mm -hmm. this is why it's so important that when we do meditate, whether you're cross-legged on the floor or going for a walk, is actually having all your chakras your body erect and everything open, chest open, right. not only just to take the breath in and the breath out, but to align all the energy so it can flow within your body. Right. So all of these little things, if we're conscious of it and we start doing them, we find the journey to peace so much easier. Right, right, right. And that is, in my experience, is a continual challenge or a continual practice of staying in peace because things happen and you know the conflict comes up or whatever and there's always a choice mm -hmm. how am i going to react to the situation and also being in like a regular practice of meditation or something that uh, brings greater well-being and openness mm -hmm. that helps build that muscle it's kind of like yes. you're, you're developing the muscle of being open or being you know, in greater compassion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... What always, made you start this? What made you, right in the beginning, ago? because you've been doing it for so long, and um, I don't know about you, I'm 70, so I'm from this, the 70s was I, my well, youth you're, area. You're, you're, you're a young one to me. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, the 60s and the 70s is when, you know, give peace a chance. People were looking to open the door to peace. And then we kind of went into a different industrial area where it became opulism and popularity and all of that. And, you know, we're swinging back. But, you know, what was that catalyst for you where it's like, I have got to open this door to the peace initiative. It's so utterly important because, you know, it's it's especially when, you know, I mean, UN is looking at peace around the world and understanding that we do not want war torn. That's, that is the detriment to everybody, not just to the lives lost, but to the planet, to, to everything. It's pure detriment. There is no gain in war, right. none whatsoever. But, you know, what was that? That goes, I have to take this path. Well, um, I would say it was, you know, growing up and, you know, um, and being in the wonder of nature, I grew up in, in um, basically, well, I was born in Minnesota, and then at seven, we moved to San Francisco and lived, grew up in South San Francisco, when they still had hills and creeks and and um, rather than all... Uh, Which houses. is now all condos. Right. <laughs> yeah. and, and, but it was, you know, just, you know, experiencing the wonder of nature, yeah. just the wonder and just the miracle of life. Yeah. And spending time in creeks and doing microscopes and doing, and just like, it's all perfect. I mean, it just is, you know, awesome, just on every level. And then also just worrying about what is life about? Why are we here? What? And I had um, a couple of experiences that were really um, uh, opening my, you know, their spiritual experiences really opened my understanding to the greater picture greater what, who we are, what this journey is, and is the practice. There are practices. It, it's just what we were talking about before, being mm -hmm. in a greater consciousness. And that consciousness, the journey continues. But while I'm here, you, you know, the real uh, effort is, what can I do to make it better? Yeah. What can I make? How can I assist? Um, because I also have a, a white man of privilege. Um, how can I, you know, make a contribution as I live my life? And so um, that's where I got uh, uh, engaged with Pathways of Peace in 1980, uh, meeting the founder, um, 
her name was uh, Ava Madison. She had the vision at four years old of world peace, mm -hmm. what that could be, and and lived her life in that way, and uh, you know, became uh, a part of the very beginning of Pathways to Peace. And in, in it also went into being a um, nonprofit organization in 1983. But the this I think is really important because in the in the world in the physical world we create things or environments to live to be to you know we've created our cities our, our mm -hmm. communities our city councils all the things that we we live by. And creating this nonprofit organization, Pathways to Peace, it's an infrastructure. It's an infrastructure of peace. Yeah. So you have a form, you have something to work with, and that you can be identified in the world and can do, you know, the structural things that you need to, you know, can do. So the um, mission of Pathways to Peace is Pathways to Peace expands the understanding and expression of peace fosters peace builders and peace building activities and builds an integral movement for a culture of peace. Mm -hmm. So the Pathways is part of the, as you had mentioned in the beginning, 1981, where we helped to create the International Day of Peace at the UN. We were involved, David was involved with the UN in 1981 and helped to create that along with other noted, noted people. Um, and in um, 1982, it was a quiet event. It was supposed to be for the world, supposed to be for civil society. It was a quiet event in, in the General Assembly. And so in 1983, Pathways to Peace, we said, okay, this needs to come out. So we spent a year planning and, and organizing. In 1984, was the first major International Day of Peace celebration in San Francisco. And it was a very big deal. There's a lot behind that, and, and also engaged about 40 other countries around the world, and so that was really the stepping out. But that was something that we could do mm -hmm. because we had the capacity and the structure, and it was also recognized by the UN. So we were able to do that, um, and so then <clears throat> we were also very involved with the what's known as the um, Global Action and of Culture of Peace program of action of the culture of peace, which was created at the UN uh, as a proclamation, um, I mean, as a uh, resolution. And fundamentally, it's about how this is for, again, all people, all countries, and there are eight action areas, but fundamentally a culture of peace as opposed to the culture of war. And the culture of peace is um, a set of values, attitudes, tradition, and modes of behavior and ways of life. So it's not just music and art and as a culture. Yes. It is all things that we do. So mm -hmm. it's creating the environment that we want to live in. And Be the, the brush on the canvas, right? Right. And, and mm -hmm. what are the structures we want to create? And yeah. how do we do that? And um, we did that in... Um, when I lived in San Francisco in the Bay Area for many, many years and moved to Ashland, Oregon, where I am now, in 2003, and uh, with my uh, partner, Irene Kai, um, we had the inspiration of manifesting the culture of peace in a town, in a city, in a community. So we created the Ashland Culture of Peace Commission. And over the, that was in 2015, but over the time, we um, manifested the, in this community, it's a 20, 22,000 person community. What is a culture of peace? Helping people understand what this, this is. And what does it mean for the police department? What does it mean mm -hmm. for city council? Mm -hmm. What does it mean for the school kids? What does it mean? So everyone is identifying what does that mean and how do we create that in our community? And in our lives, it all begins here, yeah. you know, with the person, you know, the, personally. But then it is how do we create that in our community? And then it comes back to, as you mentioned earlier, it's all about the choices. What yes. are the choices that we make? Yes. And what do we make choices individually as well as collectively? Yeah. And so that's how, again, peace building 
is how do we do this, you know, to create the, the, the greatest well-being for all mm -hmm. in our communities. And that's also the a continual challenge because of all the different personalities and all the different yes. lifestyles and all the rest of it. But it's a, it's a pathway to greater well-being. Right. For everyone. I say when you're aware, you care. Right. And and this doesn't mean that there aren't going to be conflicts. That doesn't mean there aren't going to be things. I mean, just look at what's happening right now as we speak today, voting day. And you've never seen, you know, so polarized opposites there. And, you know, not every one town is going to be of one political party. And it, But it's the ability to agree to disagree or to open up and try and learn from each other as to why we make the choices. I'm a true colors coach, which is the four key personality types. And when you actually oh. understand your own personality trait, you know how you perceive and how you interact. And if we could learn to use the other personality traits within our persona as well and go, okay, this person is speaking from that personality trait, that person is speaking from this personality trait. How do I communicate with them from mine where we can find a cohesiveness Right, mm -hmm. where we can actually look at the common denominator because basically we're all saying the same thing in a different way or may approach things a different way. And instead of going, well, you're wrong, it, it's trying to understand why you see it this way. And, right. if, and if I understand, you know, then maybe I can interject a different point of view. <clears> or <throat> Maybe I understand and I've learned something that I can apply to my own. But back to the big magic word you said at the beginning, communication. Right. right. You know, and let right. your heart lead the way and not your head's opinion or ego. But, but I'll ask <clears> you, <throat> how do you get to that place of having yeah. that openness and that understanding to be able to Aware. do that? <laughs> Awareness and allowing. Right. Those, you know, you've got to be, as I said, when you're aware, you care. That means you're going to allow things to happen in a different way instead of dictating the way you want it to be. You're allowing things to uh, unravel, right? Mm -hmm. I don't comprehend what's going on in your politics right now or why even one person is even in, even allowed to be running, right? And that, that just, I'm just in a current battle for me to understand that. But I do understand how we got into power. And they say, you keep pushing the same buttons on people over right. and over again. They're going to forget any form of reasoning because they're now on that bandwagon of of almost hysteria and they're right. not thinking for themselves anymore because they're caught in this loop that's constantly being stirred up, stirred up and stirred up. It's rather like depression. When somebody is mm -hmm. in depression, do not tell them to snap out of it. This has got nothing to do with the intellectualism of the mind or looking at it. It's to do with the entire spiritual essence of you being so off balance that you need to get back into balance but to be able to come out of it and see things differently it doesn't matter right. what the mind says right the, it's everything else that's going on everything needs to find a balance how do you take people that are in a state of wiped up hysteria that they'll buy anything however ridiculous it is they'll buy it because they're not in their intellectualism they're not connected to themselves of is it true or isn't it true they're in. They're caught up in that bubble, right? So how do you bring that equilibrium back to them, to bringing back the peace when they're a tornado? Right. This is very, this is very challenge. This is a major, major challenge. Yeah, very definitely. So then, again, is what do we create? The infrastructures that we create that can support the positive. Mm. But that, that support the um, you know, moving forward that that are of the higher values, the higher energies, and um, that are attractors to to people. And I think that over time, um, again, your know, societies evolve. Yeah. Yeah. And, and well, you can't stay in that state. Because something will snap. It's like winding and winding and winding. Eventually, bing, that spring well, is going look, to snap. Look at the history of, you know, of humanity. Or look at mm. the history that, I mean, the rise and fall of, of the empires and of the 
the wars and the, you know, and. The outside atrocities that we do to one another, you right, know, it's, right, right. so it's, it's, with, there goes to be the choice. Am I going to be the person of apathy, no feeling whatsoever, no consciousness, no heart, no soul, and commit harm to someone for whatever reason? Or am I going to be a person of compassion and love and wish to be a positive energy, not only to myself, but to others? Because I believe when you're, you're in the love generator, it, the more love you give out, the more love is generated within you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And again, getting the, the structures that support that and enhance mm. that. So again, Pathways to Peace are involved with, um, uh, with the girl shelter in, in Guinea. Uh, supporting the girl shelter, and there's a long story behind this, but that have girls who refuse female genital mutilation yes. in early childhood. Then, so we have okay, and we're able to create a safe uh, place for them, and it's developed a whole uh, initiative in their community around how to you know sh change that practice and just. So it has an influence. You take a step, it has an influence. Yeah. There are a couple other, um, again, I talk about infrastructures of peace, but a couple other that are taking place, which I you know, like to share. One is um, what's known as you know the supporting, a lot of this is just rebalancing. Yeah, yes, Re all about balance, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, and one is the um, uh, second annual digital power of women conference which is taking place by you know it's being led by you know two young women but it's having a major impact on the g20 which is a meeting later this month in brazil g20 is the you know the top leaders of the of the, of the world um and but there's a, a conference that's going on which is very in, inspiring and in, you know learning about women's roles and etc um, I'll let me just share that can be information can be found by powerofwomen.info powerofwomen.info um, another is a um, initiative is known as um, Peace on Earth by 2030 and this is again you talk about practice I talk about exercising the muscle this is a whole series of activities to develop that activities around empowerment, oneness, unity, cooperation, abundance, love, faith in small groups. Mm -hmm. And in the small groups that you know, impact a local community. Yes. On an ongoing yes. basis. And that the information can be found in peace2030.earth. Peace2030.earth. Um, there's a whole thing that's taking place there. And it's really moving around the, the it's global that's taking place. Um, and I'm also a member of the Rotary E-Club of World Peace. And the Rotary, which has a, you know, almost a million and a half members around the world, um, members in every country, is doing a great deal, is focus on service. It does mm -hmm. a lot of service and, and well-being in the world, but a huge focus on peace. And peace building, but it takes you know all the you know doing clean water, taking care of um, health, the polio, all those things are actions, but it's all around you know creating a, a, yes. a culture of peace. Mm -hmm. So uh, pathways to peace is pathways to peace dot org. Mm -hmm. There's a lot that's taking place there. It could be seen, but again, these are as I'm saying, these are infrastructures that we work with and work through to you know, again help our our um, higher uh, values to be uh, demonstrated and uh, par uh, participate in and this is the thing you get people to say to you i'm only one person i can't make a difference and i say make a difference in your life that's it make a difference in your life step up to peace and equilibrium meaningful purpose coming from the heart, soul, and spirit of who you are as an essence of a being, you will be a person that starts making a difference to others because 
who you are goes out. If you're angry and bitter and, and cruel, you will afflict that on other people. If you are of love and of spirit, of kindness, caring, compassion, consideration, love, that will ripple out. It will, it will invite other people of that same energy to be a part of you. And like modules, you'll grow in each other. It's like the cellular yeah. structure in our body. Why do we get sick? The cells in our body start breaking down. When we are well, those plump, juicy cells are working together by the trillions to keep us sustainable. We've got to understand it is about the collective. That's but I, I look at it this way, something I always say. Our discovery, our self-discovery is what instrument am I? How well can I play it? I can stand as a soloist and play very well. But when I join an orchestra and where each one of us are playing in our own strengths and we play harmoniously together, we transcend so much more as a collective than we do yeah. as an individual. We're not taking away from the individual. We're asking the individual to bring their beautiful essence to the collective. Yep. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. That's beautiful. Absolutely. And what also comes to mind is, as you say, it begins with us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, a very simple and think about Mother Teresa, she said, peace begins with a smile. Yes, yes, yes. How much can that change someone's day by just looking at them and giving them a smile? It says, I see you. I wish you well. Mm -hmm. Simple but, as that, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Or a laugh or something, you know, cracking a joke, even if the weather's bad. You know, it's just whatever's going on, make humor out of it. That's the only way I can watch American news. That's for the <laughs> for a bit. I get so sometimes we, it's easy to, to get bogged down with what's going on. and But we need to step back and go, okay, I'm, we're not taking away from you the importance of what needs to change and how you want to be a part of it. What we're asking you is to approach it in a different way mm -hmm. so you have a bigger impact, mm -hmm. right? And that's the thing. I think eventually when people see how the other side live, and I'm not talking about mansions, I'm talking about peace, how they live in harmony, how they live in tranquility, how they're just simply enjoying their own enrichment and abundance of life, which has got nothing to do with money, Right. In the community where they get up every day with a smile on their face to greet another day of something that they can do that's going to help the world. That enrichment, you cannot buy. You have to be. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. And also, I am aware that, as uh, said, the greatest source of abundance is listening. Yeah. Yeah. Is listening and being open. I have a motto on my, on my network, listen, learn, and apply. Mm. You may Love only it. hear one thing on a podcast that somebody has said that resonated with you. Okay, now apply it. You heard it for a reason. It's there to pivot you in another direction, to give you different insight, to show you how. You can go back and listen to that podcast and there'll be something else that you will learn. Right? But listen. Learn and, ha and apply. It isn't, oh, well, that was all fun. No, it was to share with you. It right. is even in a world that's so full of hate. And look, I'm an empath. And so, you know, I sometimes suffer from empathic depression where I can just feel mm -hmm. the weight of the world and all the hate and everything else out there. And it weighs me down. And I have to shut down and close my walls around me to heal and come back up. Yeah. I was yeah. born a spiritual person who was having a really hard time living as a human. Uh -huh. But you said a magic word. It's taking your spirituality and structuralizing it in a practical way that you can be it every day in the human world. Right. And that took me a long time to learn. And if people yeah. can understand that be your abundant spirit of love, meaningful purpose, light, illumination for others, uh, but how do you take it into a structural way that you can shine that light on a path for you to walk and others to, to gather along with you? And for a lot of spiritual people, that is something they're missing is that structural, right? And it isn't all about the structure and not the spirit. It's, it's how do they go together in harmony?
Right, right. Which I which is a continual uh, practice, which is a yes. continual continual journey. Is it, walking that that um, path and just being conscious of yeah. what you're doing. Consciousness. I mean, the universe gave me a saying seven years ago. The universe is going to shake you up, to wake you up, for you to step up, to change up, and to grow up. And the grow up was a double entente. Grow up vibrationally, but also grow up. Please, you are so behind your evolution, humanity. We are so blind. We are meant to be in this other space of peace because the enlightenment that we're going to get from that, the creativity that we're going to get from that state of being, all creativity comes from a peaceful state. Yes, mm -hmm. we've had things out of necessity and war, like television and internet and all of those things came out of the war mongering and created it uh, for that need. But the creation of where it goes and how it serves today is peaceful creation. Right. And we are, I'm just, I hope I live long enough to see a step up into this other evolution of where we're meant to go. Because yeah. I'm tired of this perpetual circle that we're going in right now, right? Yeah. Yeah, Please yeah. give peace a chance. Please yeah, be yeah. the love and be the peace that you need in your own life and you need in the life around you. Beautifully said. Yes. So again, your site is pathwaytopeace.org, O-R-G, folks, not .com. Yeah, you right. have um, the Pathway to Peace.org International Day, a day of peace 40th anniversary, which you had. You have Instagram, Pathway to Peace, Facebook, Pathway to UN, Peace UN. Mm -hmm. And this is the thing is, if you feel, okay, I can't do this on my own. I'm, I'm a team member. I prefer to be a part of a community. I, I'm not sure, you know, if, if I'm ready to step in, you know, be that peace and be that beacon of light. Not everybody can be the torch. But you want to be a part of the light. So be a part of an organization like this, where that illumination from others will lift you up and show you your own light. You need to be in the presence of people that are at that higher elevation of energy, of love, kindness, consideration, compassion, caring, because that will help you elevate yourself. So it's so yeah. important the way you, where you put yourself. So does your organization have... Um, ability for people to join and become a part of. Yes, yeah, there are a variety of, of programs and, that we have uh, taking place, and and um, for sure. So, and, and people can also contact me, um, David Wick, David W O I C K one 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 altogether. David Wick one 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 at gmail dot com. And I'm happy to assist or you know um, direct or make the connection. So there's a lot going on um, in the world that in this uh, greater evolution of greater consciousness that is um, quite, quite profound. Yes. Even with all the, the shadows and the, yes. the, the challenges, um, but there's a groundswell that is taking place. I've been doing this 12 and a half years now, 11 and a half years of my own network, and I've interviewed people from all over the world. And, you know, I have very diverse topics. As I said last, last week, it was on, you know, the war, um, the reasoning behind it, et cetera, and what's going on. But <clears throat> I did a, a series a little while ago called Let's Get Synced. And it was on climate change, but it was about changing the climate of how we look at life. Uh -huh. For us to actually embrace what changes we need to do in climate change. Mm -hmm. And, you know, mostly people from Europe and Asia and uh, the profoundness of what they were stepping into. And everybody was stepping up with a solution, an adoptable solution. And the thing is, oh, well, what can I do? There are so many solutions out there. There are so many things that you can join, that you can get behind, that you can be a part of. That's, that can get you ticking and get you excited to be a part of it and be the wind underneath their wings, right. right? You don't have to be the whole wings and carry everyone, but you can be the wind under other people's wings. And I look at what's going on in the news, and I say Fox News is very much like a pimple going into a volcanic eruption, right? And it, it's always about hysteria. Uh, but I also look at the people I interview, like yourself, 
who've dedicated their lives to what they're doing to bring about peace, to bring about joy, to bring about meaningful purpose, and to bring about that equilibrium that we need. We need it as a human race. All animals need it, but Earth needs it. She's telling us right now, I'm going to evict you unless you get your shoot put together. Right. We, by us being peaceful, we bring an equilibrium and a positive energy to Earth itself where she can balance out. So we are the problem. Right. But if we choose, we can also be the solution. Right, right. And thank you for being a major part of the solution in your communication and in, in sharing wisdom, knowledge, um, experience with so many. So thank We've you. all got that instrument. You know, we, all of us, you know, it's understanding what our instrument is and how to use it because we're all here to be a part of Yep. Right. And it's discovering what that instrument is, how it can be a part of. And people say, who do I interview? And all those that come from the heart that have something to serve others. Bottom line, it doesn't matter what you're doing. Is it service information, inspiration, which begets invitation? Is it something practical? Is it something uplifting? But it's got to leave people with a solution. Mm -hmm. Right. Beautiful. So that's what it's about. That's what you've dedicated 40 something years to. Right. And thank you for starting this movement. Thank you for bringing this about and, and being so successful about it and having such a massive impact. And again, uh, the more we talk about it, the more we share it, the more we become it, the more we are that solution that we are all desperately seeking. And that solution is peace within us. That's it. <laughs> right? That's it. That's it. Sure. Thank you so much for sharing here today and for all the work that you've done over the years and, uh, you know, making sure that peace has its voice because amongst the thunder, very often peace gets shouted out. But peace isn't about shouting above the crowd. Right. It's, the, it's the beautiful harmony that sustains itself that that's having a ripple effect through other people and quietens their voices. Right, for sure. So, well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. And to everyone out there, remember, we are the peace we seek. We are the love we seek. It starts within. It's not the exterior life. It's the interior. Connect to your heart, your soul, your spirit, your very beingness. What is your instrument? How can you be a part of it? But find that peace within, because that peace within will have a beautiful ripple effect out, and you will be that part of the solution to healing this world and all on it. Until next time, folks, bye for now. We hope that you enjoyed the show. There are so many more for you here on selfdiscoverywisdom.com. Just go to the podcast tag at the top there and you will see all the many genres and all 3,000 shows ready for your listening. We are here to serve you, to help you on your journey of life. And we know that through inspiration, it begets invitation. We are supported by you, the listeners, and those that we interview. Anything that you can spare us in donation would be greatly accepted. And we do hope that you enjoy the next show.